Mask layers are a core piece of functionality for advanced compositing. They help with blending different layer content together. Let me show you a quick example. I've got a composition here, and I'll show this ring of light layer. It's another image that I've placed into this document, and I'll blend it in by setting its blend mode to screen. However, the bottom and side bounds of this ring of light image create a visible seam, so I'll need to blend them away manually. I can tap the plus icon on the layers panel here, then choose Mask Layer. This creates a full mask that is clipped into the ring of light layer. What I can now do is select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel on the left. The default brush nozzle is very small and has a hard edge. We'll change both of these parameters. So first, I'll increase the brush width by dragging here, then tap across to hardness and decrease it to 0%. The default brush color is set to black, which is exactly what we need to be able to paint away from this mask. I can now brush by dragging over the edges of this image to hide them. The main benefit of using masks is that they are non-destructive. For example, I could have selected the Erase Brush tool here and erased away the edges of this ring of light image. That would have permanently deleted the pixel data, however. With a mask layer, that image information is still there should I wish to bring it back. For example, I'll switch back to the Paintbrush tool, then switch from black to white by tapping on the white color here on the color panel. Then I can paint back in over the areas I want to show. I can easily toggle back over to black and remove the edge detail again by brushing. You may have a workflow where you wish to start with a completely empty mask and then paint specific areas back in. I have several images from a light painting session. I've already opened the first one as a document. I'll tap the document menu, then choose Place and Place from Files. I'll add the second image by tapping it, then choosing Open. Although I can drag to place the image, I can also tap once to place it at full resolution. I need to align it with the first image. I will automatically have the Move tool selected, so I'll quickly enable snapping on the toolbar up here, then drag the image into place until it snaps to the bounds of the document. Now I can open the Layers panel, tap the plus icon, and this time choose Empty Mask Layer. You'll notice the top image layer has disappeared from view. The mask is automatically set as the active layer, so I can now just switch to my paintbrush tool, make sure I'm set to white, and begin painting to reveal a portion of the top image. I can now bring the third image in, place it, then line it up. And I'll use the same procedure as before. Add an empty mask layer, switch to the paintbrush tool, and paint in over the sky area to reveal it from this third image. Because masks are like any other layer, you can also hide and show them. Hiding the top mask, for example, will make the top image layer completely opaque. Showing it again will reveal the layer content beneath. Tapping the Layer Options icon will reveal several additional features you can take advantage of. One of these is Solo Mode. In Solo Mode, a mask layer is isolated and represented as a grayscale bitmap. This makes it easy to see how precise the masking is and gives you the opportunity to amend it if required. To exit Solo Mode, I can tap the Solo button again. Or, if I exit Layer Options and tap onto another parent layer, this will automatically exit Solo Mode as well. Finally, you can quickly fill or erase a mask if you want to start masking from scratch again, or even invert it if required. To do this, ensure you have the mask layer selected, then go to the Channels panel and tap the three dots 
next to the mask alpha entry. You can now choose to invert the mask, so white becomes black, and vice versa. Choose fill to reset to a full mask, or choose clear to end up with an empty mask. Having cleared the mask, I can then paint back in with white over the sky area. And there we go, that was a quick tutorial on how to use mask layers in Affinity Photo for iPad. Thank you for watching.